is if people are sick enough to require hospitalization. If that happens, we have a care team in place that reviews the care of every patient every day, twice a day for the past almost 10 months now. And that care team is comprised of experts in infectious disease and critical care medicine, as well as experts who weigh in on any potential complication that might occur with COVID, such as kidney disease or liver disease or blood clotting abnormalities. We also have involved in that care team people who are the principal investigators of our experimental clinical trials. At those meetings, there is a consensus-based approach to what the best care should be for each patient and whether or not they are eligible for clinical trials. And together, that leads to a consensus-based recommendation, which is then brought to the primary treating physician who is in charge of treating that patient in the hospital, and a consensus-based decision is made on how to treat that individual patient. These meetings are held, again, every day, twice a day, to monitor the progress of these patients as they move forward. We haven't formally evaluated it yet, so we can't tell you that. But we do believe that with our increasing experience in taking care of patients, with the availability of new drugs that have been approved, uh, and with our uh, enhanced hospital capabilities, so we've opened up some new beds and some new units uh, recently, we believe that our mortality rates today will be as favorable as possibly better than the mortality rates that we described in this paper. The intervention that, that I think has made a difference that Mayo has implemented, in addition to very uh, broad and robust research uh, or testing capabilities, is the remote monitoring. So there's a variety of remote monitoring tools that are out there that can be as simple as follow-up phone calls or can be complicated like having apps on your, on your smartphone which talks about your respiratory rate or your heart rate or your temperature. And all of those together, that close follow-up, may indicate when a patient should be admitted to a hospital, whereas many times these patients are resistant to coming to hospital. But, but having that inf information can help uh, guide the healthcare team to recommend hospitalization at a certain point. And the appropriate timing of hospitalization is very important. If you hospitalize too early, you're using up beds, you might not be uh, providing incremental care to patients, whereas if you hospitalize too late, complications might have already set in. All of these advances have been made possible by decades of sustained biomedical research. So our ability to respond to COVID has been remarkable. Within 10 months, we've been able to identify the virus, some drugs which work for it, many other drugs that are being tested, the ability to test and diagnose it, and now we're on the brink of having a vaccine. And all that um, speaks favorably to the decades of biomedical investment that has allowed these advances to occur so uh, impressively rapidly.